Okay, gang. We're going to talk about shows. All right. Again, this is part of the professional series. If you're not a professional, you're welcome to watch this. Um, some of the stuff might be boring, but some of it might be interesting, especially if you're a festival goer and you are wondering, why are people charging this much? Uh, you're about to find out. Okay. For this specific video, I am using a show that I have personally done twice. Okay. Um, it is Karma Fest, and I typically do the fall show, which is more local to me. It is at Stepping Stone Museum in Have a Grace, Maryland. And this year's show is October 10th and 11th. Nope, I'm not being paid to promote it. And no, I'm not going this year because all the indoor spaces are full. Okay. When you are considering buying booth space at a fair, the first thing you need to ask is how many attendees typically go. The second thing you need to ask is, is there a vendor I can talk to that offers similar services that may be able to tell me a little bit more about the experience? Uh, someone could ask me, I'd be happy to tell them. Um, the thing about October weather in our area is it's typically cold. Um, we're talking mid-October, okay? So one year it was cold, one year it was hot, the other year it was completely rainy, okay? If a festival is rain or shine, which this one is, um, it sucks to have outdoor space. And I'll just leave it at that because that makes sense, right? Um, if you're indoor, in this case, uh, they have little carriage houses. There's a few outbuildings at the museum. Um, or you can have space under the pavilion. <coughs> or you can have completely outdoor space. You bring your own tent. You bring your own setup. You're good. If it rains sucks to be you. Same thing at the pavilion. There are no sides to the pavilion. If it rains, it sucks to be you. Um, if you're indoor, it's not so bad. It's still cold. It's still rainy, which drops the attendance down significantly. Let me tell you, significantly. All right. Um, but the problem is, you know, you sign up three, four months ahead of time. You don't know what the weather is going to be like. You can only look at historical stuff that says, yes, all right. Half the time it's been cold and rainy. Half the time it's been gorgeous. What are you gonna get? I don't know. All right, let's talk money. All right, for indoor spaces at Stepping Stone, it is 275 or 250 for the two day show. Okay, Saturday is from 10 to 7, that's eight hours. Sunday is from 10 to 6, that's seven hours. Okay. Now again, this is a 10 o'clock show. You're required to be caffeinated, happy, and awake when people come in. Um, <coughs> the pavilion spaces are $200. The outdoor spaces are $150, okay? Um, for a fair of this size, that's not bad. It's probably the average. Do I think it's expensive? Yeah, but it's because I'm poor. <laughs> You know, like honestly, honestly, okay. Um, they, the big show that Karma Fest does um, in Oregon Ridge gets about 3,000 attendees. This is a much smaller show. You're talking 500, 700 people. I mean, I don't even know. They didn't have the numbers online I looked. Um, but you could always ask, you know, if you really want to know. But this isn't going to be a huge show. I mean, you're not going to walk away making a million dollars and have a TV contract out of the show. It's not going to happen, okay? Um, to break down the numbers, okay, I picked a pavilion spot because as a beginner, this is a good place to be. You're going to be surrounded by other vendors, okay? So people are more than likely going to come see you, especially if it's raining, it's under a pavilion, so there's a little bit of shelter. Rather than just being in a tent kind of on your own, people aren't always going to walk into your tent, you know, and they just aren't. Whereas if you're a pavilion, people kind of stroll around a little more. So I took the $200 pavilion spot, okay? Now again, Saturday is eight hours. I figured if you're going to break it down, you need to make $100 a day to break even, Okay, Saturday, that's eight hours. That means you need to make twelve fifty an hour to break even. Okay, now I'm going to tell you, the majority of people come on a Saturday other than a Sunday, especially being weather dependent. Okay, so please keep track of these things. Um, Saturday, with only seven hours, you need to make fourteen twenty eight an hour. Okay, that's only to break even. All right, so if you are giving readings 
Oh gosh. If you're giving readings and you're doing hour long readings, that means you can only do 15 readings over the weekend. Okay. That's it. 15 one hour readings. Now, if you're charging a hundred bucks per an hour, that's great. But that also cuts down significantly on your clientele. Um, people that go to the outdoor one um, at Stepping Stone are usually a younger clientele than the people that go to Oregon Ridge, okay? Which is cool, you know, we love the young folks. Um, but it's a lot of walking and the older people don't wanna walk or may not feel comfortable walking. It is a bit of a hike, okay? Um, so if you're going to do, is, uh, that's if you're, I mean, that's if you're booked. 15 hours if you're booked. That's no potty breaks, that's no food. You know, that's doing readings hour after hour after hour. Now, most people can't afford an hour reading. How should we be charging like 100 bucks an hour? So most people break it down to 30-minute readings, okay? 30-minute chunks. That's great because you can take a lunch break. You can take two potty breaks, you know, whatever. Um, make sure you have a sign-up listing. You should come with a pre-printed list of your times and when you're available, okay? You should also have an about me sheet with your time sheet because if you're giving a reading to a customer, and someone comes up to your table to see when you're available, you need to have a little bio info, okay? You also should have cards. Get cheap cards. Vistaprint, dude. Awesome cards, cheap, all right? Um, all they have to do, your name. If you don't want to give out your phone number, give out your email, your Facebook, your YouTube, whatever. Um, <coughs> have a card because if someone really likes you and wants another reading, you need to be able to give them something, okay? Now, a lot of people sell little things, um, stuff that they make, trinkets, stones, potions, love spells, whatever. That's great. If you are doing that and readings, you need to have another person at your table. Why? Because if you're giving a reading and someone wants to buy something, you can't stop your reading and sell them something. Um, so be aware of that. It's great to have two people at a booth, right? You can also split a table. That's another thing, split a table or a booth spot. <clears throat> but okay say let's say oh, I thought people were charging $45 for a 30 minute reading and I think that's exorbitant I'll be honest um for a 30 minute reading I mean a buck a minute 30 bucks so let's say for you know just round numbers sake okay let's say you're charging 30 bucks for a 30 minute reading okay that means Saturday, you have 16 spots available. All right, we'll take one out because of the potty break. We'll take two out. All right, two potty breaks, one food break. You're down to 14 spots. I can do math. I can. You're down to 14 spots. Okay, that's Saturday. That's when most of your people are going to be coming. All right, now you probably won't fill all 14 spots. All right, let's say you fill seven spots. Seven times 30 is $210. And that's awesome, right? So that's $210 your first day, all right? Let's say Sunday's rained out, you're done. You made 10 bucks, that's it, okay? Let's say you fill half your spots for Sunday. Now again, Sunday's seven hours. That would be 14 readings. We'll take out two, 12 readings. Let's say out of that, you really only see four people because it's a slow day, okay? Four times 30 is 120, all right? 120 plus 210 is $330. Now, subtract out your $200 booth fee. You've made $130. Congratulations, you've made $130. Now let's divide that by the 15 hours that you've been there. <laughs> and I know that's less than minimum wage. That is $8.66 an hour. That's it. And I mean, for some people, that's fine. For a lot of people, Mm, that sucks. <coughs> but Stepping Stone is not Oregon Ridge. You know, every fair is going to be different. Let's say you did awesome. You sold all of your readings, okay? So you sold all 14 spots on Saturday, okay? 14 spots times $30. That's $420 for Saturday, okay? Let's say you completely got rained out on Sunday. But Saturday, you did $420. Take out your booth fee. All right, and you made $220 for the weekend. For some people, that's great because you made your booth fee back and you made more. That's awesome. Oops. 
<laughs> for some people, that's not enough. Okay. I mean, you're talking 15 hours you're sitting around and that's fine, but you're going to buy drinks. You're going to buy food. You're probably going to find a t-shirt because you're bored and there's nothing else to do but walk around, you know, you're going to spend money. That's what happens. I, don't, I always bring my drinks. I always bring my snacks. I always end up finding something to buy. I just do, whether it's a book or I get a reading, you know, I buy a necklace, whatever. You're going to buy something. <laughs> so take out that little bit of money. What about gas? You know, uh, how long did it take you to drive there? What about setup? You're going to have to set up Friday. That's probably going to take an hour or two. For some people not, some people more. Um, now, if you're in an outdoor spot, that's less money, right? But that's also less of a chance that people are going to get to you. Now, let's say you paid $275 to be in a prime indoor spot, okay? You made $420 minus $275. Oh, why is this not working? I'm usually so much better at math, but my head cold is killing me. All right. <laughs> Watch me make a fool of myself. 145 bucks. That's it. Let me tell you, for a prime indoor spot, you should be at least doubling your booth fee. All right. Um, now, again, there are people that are going to charge 50 bucks for 30 minutes. All right. If you charge 50 bucks for 30 minutes, A, better be an awesome effing reading. Okay. B, you're going to have a lot less people signing up than you think you are, all right? See, I, man, I hope you get it. Good luck. Uh, it seems the more festivals I go to, the more rates are going up. And I understand for people like the British lady, okay? She's obviously on tour, basically, okay? So her rates were exorbitant. Um, but for someone especially who's just getting started, and this is a prime opportunity for students. Get an outdoor spot at a summer festival when you know it's going to be hot, gorgeous, whatever. Borrow somebody's tent. Borrow a table. Go. Charge cheap rates. Not to make money, but to get the practice in. Because that's really, as a student, a goal. Practice, 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 practice. Get your name out. If you're going to start doing readings, you know, get your name out. That is perfect. Um, for someone like me, you know, a buck a minute doesn't sound like a lot. You're like, those phone readers charge 275. Well, that's great, but uh, you know, go be a phone reader then. I, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. You can charge whatever you want to charge. What I'm saying is you'd be surprised how many people will absolutely turn away. And it's not because they're cheap. It's because people have a certain amount of money to spend at these things. Okay. Um, and if, the person next to you is charging 20 bucks for 30 minutes, mm, they may frown upon you. You know, if you're char if you have to choose between someone that's charging $30 for 30 minutes or $50 for 30 minutes, pretty sure all of us are going to pick the person charging $30 for 30 minutes. Um, now again, this is going to depend, depend on your professional appearance. Are you well dressed? You know, do you have a sign with your name on it? Is your table covered in a beautiful tablecloth? Do you have a nice neat sign up sheet in about me area and cards? Or is it literally just a rickety table with crap on it? You know, if you're going to charge more, you need to be professional. Okay. Uh, have a tablecloth, practice your setup at home. You know, a lot of people sell other stuff on the side. So make sure everything's going to look nice. A lot of people have different booth setups. I usually do two tables on the side and a reading area in the back center. Some people prefer to have a one table up front and they do their readings behind the table. Um, it's up to you. <coughs> but you need to think about this stuff. A lot of people don't think about this. Are you going to have a sign? Is it going to be a homemade sign? Is it going to be a Vista print sign? What are you going to hang your sign on? You know, bring duct tape. Always bring duct tape because somebody will always need duct tape. Make friends with your neighbors. Um, sometimes you'll need them to watch your table when you have to go pee. Or if they're going to get a drink, maybe you can ask them to get you a drink. You know, make friends. But be courteous of what your audience can take. Um, again, stepping stone is a smaller crowd. Stepping stone is a younger crowd. This means that they have less money to spend. It just, it is, you know. Um, 
uh, if you want to make more money, go to the bigger show. The booth fees are going to be higher. They just are. It is going to be hot. It is going to be sweaty. The hours are going to be longer. You know, it's the whole thing. Every show is different. Um, but you really need to think about these. A lot of times my hourly rate is crap. But a lot of times I do shows for me not to make money. Um, it's nice to make money. Um, I never make a lot of money, honestly, you know. Um, now I've had a few people email me just kind of follow up and let me know how things are going. But, you know, what is your goal? If you're setting up a booth and you're charging people money, what is your goal? Are you there to make money? How much money are you going to make? Because if you're going into Stepping Stone expecting to make $500, I got to tell you, it depends on your hourly rate. It depends on how much you're spending on booth space. It depends on what your setup looks like because a lot of people don't have very professional setups. So obviously that's something that I am drawn towards. You know, does your booth look nice? Yes, you need to spend some time and money on your booth. How much time and money are you spending on your booth? Because that's money that comes out of your bottom line. You know, whether you realize it or not, you know, your cards, your signage, all that stuff, if you're in a business, can be written off as, you know, your advertising stuff. But if you're just doing this on the side, that's your money, okay? Um, uh, you know, there's a lot of little things that come into play. <coughs> But unless you're doing a lot of shows every weekend and building up a tremendous clientele, you're not going to make money, like a lot of money. You can make enough money, and if that's what you're after, then great. I mean, I do stepping stone to make a little extra money for the holidays, you know. Um, hopefully next year I'll be back. That would be fantastic, you know. Is it something I would bring my kids to? Um no, because you're going to be running around the whole time. And that's the thing, you know. Go with a support person if you have more than one thing going on at your booth. Um, I do shows with my little sister and my daughter for the farm show. And one of us is always watching her and one of us is always running the tables. We've been doing smaller local shows, typically like churches or stuff like that. So everyone's a little more understanding about that. But... You know, obviously you don't want to be running after your screaming kid trying to sell something to, to people, you know. That's not professional. So there's a lot of things to think about when you're considering getting a booth at a fair, okay. Um, I, I always recommend to people do it. Man, if you have the money, it's a fantastic experience. But I really want you to go in with realistic expectations, okay. Um, obviously, one of the big things you need to think about is how much are you charging okay what exactly are you charging for you know um you need to be up front and you're about me you know i have this amount of experience my readings consist of whatever you know especially if you're doing tarot readings you know are they allowed to ask more than one question do they just get one spread for the reading and that's it you know <coughs> people don't know what to expect so you need to kind of educate your customers okay um and then what? They have the reading and then what? Do you want them to follow up with you? Give them a card. I'd really like to hear back from you. You know, I'm I'm always learning. I'm always looking for new clients, especially if you're building your clientele. You always want to make sure they leave with a card in hand, okay? Write your phone number on the back. Write a message on the back. Happy to see you. Um, give them something to leave with. I don't care if it's a flyer for your phone reading rates. Give them something to leave with, okay? Um, what else? Gracious. Yeah, what else can you sell at your table? There's a lot of things you can sell at your table. Um, you know, in Maryland, food is kind of, you can't really do that. In Pennsylvania, you can sell food. Uh, and these are things to look up and ask other vendors about, you know. Email, email a vendor. You know, there are a lot of big people at Tacoma Fest every year and do all of the shows, okay. Um, email somebody and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm interested in doing this. I wanted to know what your experience was like. Um, you know, not all, ask about the weather. I know it sounds stupid. Ask about the weather. You know, is it really cold? Um, you know, when do most of the people come? You know, for a show that starts at 8, most people probably don't come until 10. These shows t typically start at 10, and a lot of people come at 10. So you might have a rush at the beginning and a rush midday, and then it quiets down. Um, again, it depends what other things are going on. The big Karma Fest at Oregon Ridge, 
has music all through the day and yoga stuff all through the day. The little one at Stepping Stone doesn't really do that yet. So really people are going to see the vendors and for a few of the free lectures, okay? Why not volunteer to give a lecture? You know, if you're already gonna be there, make sure you have a sign, you know, on your reading list that says lecture at pavilion, blah, 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 come see me and make sure before you leave your table, you put out a sign that says, I'm giving a lecture at hall A, come see me. Also, you know, written on your reading list so that people know where you are um, and why not volunteer to give a free lecture? Why not? Some people charge, you know, you can charge, um, you know, again, you're going to have to talk to management about giving stuff like that. But, you know, a free lecture is a huge way to gain clients. Um, and, you know, you have people like me saying, hey, I went to a lecture by Jessica and, you know, she said a lot of things that really click with me. Um, I suggest, I highly recommend her to anyone looking for a teacher or a reading or, you know, you have regular people telling other people about you, which is great. Yay. Um, always have candy. I know it sounds stupid. Always have candy. You know, people who kind of want to pop by, but really like the candy are going to pop by at least to get a piece of candy. And that's great. Say hi. You know, don't, don't scare them away. Uh, I'll be honest. Some of these things are so slow. Uh, you just want to talk to another human being for two to five minutes and that's fine. Just talk, you know, you don't have to be like, Hey, you want a reading? Or you may open with, Hey, you want a reading? And it'd be like, no, I just want a piece of candy. Be like, Oh, enjoy. Thanks. Thanks for stopping by. How's the weather? You tried the food? You going to any lectures? You know, some people, some people are always taken aback because we're not used to just, you think everyone's just going to sell you something. Not, not at things like this. Um, normally it's just kind of one of those things where you get to know people and those are the shows I enjoy doing. Okay. I don't like the high pressure shows, sell, 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 sell. Um, same thing with the farm stuff. We, we don't really do big things like that. So know your show. If you haven't been to the show as an attendee, you probably should go to the show before signing up, honestly. Okay. That means you have to wait a year. That may suck, but you know what? When you go, you might find out you really don't like the show. Um, for instance, we did for the farm stuff, uh, the big Timonium home and garden show, they had split it from a home and garden to a home and garden and craft show. Well, it turns out the craft show was in a completely different building. It sucked. It completely sucked. Had we been in the same building as the home and garden stuff, it would have been great. It would have been like a million people. Most people didn't even know the other building was in the show. It was terrible. Won't do that again. Didn't do that again. Lost a lot of money at that show. Um, so, yeah, I mean, simple things like this. Simple things like math. Sit down. Calculate it. Say, okay, it's an eight-hour show. If I do 30-minute readings, maybe I'll even do 15-minute readings. I'll do, like, an angel card reading. 15-minute reading. It'll be my special for the show, okay? Um, that big sign, show special, you know. Um, and, and have little spots like that. But... Be realistic. You're not going to make a million dollars at your first show and be able to retire. Sorry. I mean, I don't, I don't care how good you are. It just isn't going to happen, you know? And a lot of these people do the show every year just because they enjoy doing it. You make a little money on the side. You have fun. You get to see old friends. I mean, I know half the people at the show now because I've done it a few times. And it's nice to catch up and all that. But is it something for everybody? No, it's not. Now, if it's one weekend out of a year that you can find a babysitter and make sure you have a babysitter and you know the weather is going to be nice because it's the middle of summer. It might be hot, but at least it's going to be nice. You know, that's that a go, dude. Pfft, go. Um, when it starts being a budgetary issue, that's something you need to be cautious about because, again, you're giving out your booth space fee ahead of time, okay? And... I always, I always like, oh, am I going to do it this year? Am I not going to, am I going to do it this year? And then I'm like, oh, I have the money. Might as well sign up. And that's great. You know, unless your car breaks down next week and then that sucks, right? <laughs> <coughs> it sounds dumb. I'm sure it happens all the time. Um, you know, if $250 for a booth spot is going to break your budget, don't do it. I mean, especially if you're not going to make the money back because then that's really going to suck, you know? Um, try to find a local show with a smaller spot, you know, 
it was really interesting this year specifically karma festa oregon ridge had teeny tiny spots like literally two chairs next to each other in the hallways of the indoor building um and they've never done that before i mean the indoor building was packed it sucked though let me tell you why it sucked because you couldn't get through the diagonal hallways you just couldn't because there were people that were obviously there trying to give people readings because that's what people in the chairs were doing but not only was it com it was extremely loud extremely loud extremely busy um so even if it was a cheap spot as a student that might be very frustrating and difficult to deal with if you're not used to that sort of thing and they probably didn't actually make much money because everyone was walking past them you know there weren't any signs it wasn't room for a table it's literally the chairs <coughs> so while that might have been a fifty dollar booth space i i i don't know that those people are making that money back there just wasn't enough space you know they they crowded that way too much mm. um and again once you start doing shows especially if you do the same show over and over again you can migrate your space for instance um Karma Fest, okay? I always pick the indoor spaces. I always get in the carriage house. If I was the first person to sign up for an indoor space, I could probably request a move to the main building. Do I want to be in the main building? Oh, I wouldn't mind being in the main building, but I really kind of like the carriage house. Um, we're the last one on the stop of a loop. And it's all indoors. It's small, which means it's quiet. You can't really stuff too many people in there, which is great. So for me, that's a perfect spot. But if I wanted to move a building, I would have to buy my spot early. For instance, if I wanted a spot for next year, okay, a lot of people just pay ahead of time. That's great. I pay ahead of time. Send a note saying, hey, I really want to switch buildings this year. Here's my money ahead of time. This is where I'd like to be. Now, a lot of people have like standing orders, um, especially the big sponsors, you know, I think there's a stone guy and like a book person and a jewelry person <laughs> that have like the main spots. <coughs> so I'd be like, I don't want to steal their spots. I just want to be in the building. And you can ask, you know, she may say, no, I'm sorry. Everyone else sort of signed up for next year in that building. You're going to be stuck in the carriage house. I'm like, okay, if that's a deal breaker, then that's a deal breaker. Be honest. Say, you know what? I think I'm going to wait. Or maybe try, you know, Oregon Ridge. Maybe try, they have a winter lecture series now. Try that one. Um, they had one in Pottstown last weekend, um, which was like a cool overnight, more of a music thing than a vendor thing. And that's another thing. If you know that you're going to a music festival, it might be kind of odd to be a reader. Uh, for instance, we... Where did we go? We went to like the Blueberry Festival or something locally and there was like a psychic reader there. And I was like, really? That's out of place. But you never know. People might really embrace that. So think out of the box. You might not just want to go to psychic fairs. You might just want to go to a local fair and you'll be the only reader there, which is awesome. You know, it cuts down on the competition. Probably have to lower your rates a little bit. Um, but think out of the box you know um, another thing is a lot of people do Skype readings a lot of people do phone readings you know you don't have to have a booth to start your business um, but the fairs are great just to meet the people and have the experiences and see crazy panels or be on crazy panels and give lectures and do all that you know getting involved in the community is definitely one of the best things you can do for yourself as a professional for your business as a student as a lifelong learner um, cause you never know who you're going to meet. So, uh, but watch your money. So one, watch your money. One piece of advice, watch your money. Okay. <coughs> cause you pay your booth fees at a time, but if you're buying lunch cause you're bored and you're buying a snack cause you're bored and you're buying that really cute shirt cause it's cheap and you know, you spend a hundred bucks in a day and you still haven't made booth fee. Yeah. So please watch your money. I love you guys. If you have any questions, please let me know. Talk to you later. Bye.